Hello, 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 everyone. We are gonna play Red's Root. Yay! <laughs> the one I've been looking forward to. Uh, I remember playing Fritz Root after all three of the normal and uh, the ones that are not locked. The the roots that are not locked. I played them all first before going on to the roots that are locked. And I did Fritz first because I couldn't wait any longer. I was just like, I want to, I want to be, I want to see how being together with Fritz is gonna like become or be like. But it became so tragic! Oh my god, I hated it. I love Fritz so much, but his root is just so bad. I... The happy ending was not a happy ending. <sighs> okay, let's start. <laughs> Enough dilly daddling. The Knight in No Armor <laughs> Chapter 1 <coughs> yeah. Hello! And that is why, on this day, I am stepping down from my honorable position as commander of the Order of Keldera. Fritz is standing on a small podium erected just outside the front gate. His expression somber as he gazes at the large gathering of knights. He has already given his resignation speech up to the majority of the lower ranking knights. This one is just for ceremony purposes. I stand at the edge of the gates, arm, arms crossed as I watch the proceedings. My heart, my heart ought to be filled with hope, but I am more anxious than I have been in years. I cannot shake the feeling that Fritz is doing this because of me. It has been two years since Fritz Jello Aiden Liverton, my personal knight, was promoted to the position of commander. Father bestowed the title and responsibility upon him after seeing how he acted during the crisis with mother. Fritz possessed and required the required skill and the ability to lead, even if he did re sometimes require my assistance on account of his initial clumsiness. The new responsibilities pulled Fritz away from me. It has been this, uh, been like this for nearly two years, even though the two of us see each other when we can. They say distance makes the heart grow fonder, but in this case... I stare at Fritz. There is nothing soft about the look on his face. And that is why it is an honor to promote Jiren Valente, my second in command, to head commander. I expect you to treat her with the same respect you have shown me. Jiren moves forward to stand beside him when he gestures. Sir Fitzgerald. A flicker of smile passes over Fritz's face. Sir is less so stiff, don't you think? Jiren smiles at him. There's a subtle sadness in her eyes, though I cannot imagine why. The proceedings go on for some time after that. It is only when the ceremony has drawn to a close that I head back to the palace for one of my mandatory lessons. I am relieved when my tutor dismisses me early. Maybe now I'll be able to catch Fritz. I am on, on my way to the palace gates when I stop noticing Fritz and Durin at the end of the corridor. The minute Fritz sees me, his lips pull back into a gentle smile. Princess, I was wondering when you'd appear. Good afternoon, Princess Lucette. Good afternoon, Jiren Valiente, commander of the Order of Caldera. Jiren laughs. It still sounds like such a mouthful. It's shorter than Lieutenant Commander of the Order of Caldera, at least. A fair point. I hope you'll... No, I'll, I'll still be asking for your advice every now and then, Fritz. I hope you don't mind. Of course not. It's the least I can do after putting this responsibility on you so suddenly. But now, no titles, no obstructions, right? She smiles at the two of us. 
you two have all the time in the world to spend together. Or a lot more of it, in any case. She pauses to look between us. May I ask you something? Of course. Being able to do, be with the princess isn't the only reason you resigned, is it? Mm, what makes you say that? Before I can react, Fritz wraps an arm around my waist and pulls me closer. The princess has always been my top priority. The words are accompanied by a mischievous grin. I am equally stunned and embarrassed. Jiren stares between the two of us with wide eyes. When Fritz sees her expression, he pulls his arm away with a laugh. Sorry, princess. Sometimes I can't help teasing. These little comments of Fritz's have become more common over the past two years. I believe more than anything that he speaks like this more often now because he is more comfortable around me. Hmm... You two have changed, haven't you? Both of you. I know that she is right, but she is looking primarily at Fitz when she says it. But... Was the princess really the only reason, Fritz? Though Fritz continues to smile, I can see something twitch in his expression. I have known him long enough to see beyond his confident facade. I can now read Fritz's true emotion from his small gestures. No, it is not the only reason. I think back to the jeering crowds and the agitated townsfolk. I remember the way people protested Fritz's promotion to commander because of his previous involvement with mother. I can still remember why they call him out in the streets. A wolf wearing a man's skin, a spy, a traitor. But Fritz only smiles. Sure, there were other reasons, but being the, with the princess has always been the most important. I miss being her personal knight. Joran eyes him skeptically for a few moments, but in the end, she only shakes her head and smiles. I'm glad for the two of you then. She excuses herself after that, explaining that she has a speech to prepare for as the new pro newly promoted commander. The moment she leaves, the corridor becomes quiet. I look up at Fritz, wondering if I ought to apologize for being the, one the reasons he had to step down. Or should I congratulate him on his new freedom? I mean... Why apologize? He's only gonna make him feel bad, you know? Apology is... Ap you know what people want to hear? They want to hear a thank you. Thank you is more nicer to be uh, to hear than a sorry. Because sorry means that you did something wrong. And it's something that you should be disappointed in. But you didn't... But princess didn't do anything wrong. So you shouldn't apologize to him. You should congratulate him. I think that's what he wants to hear more than a sorry, you know. You normally don't congratulate someone on resigning, but Fritz claims that this is what he wanted. Thank you, princess. With this, you'll have no more obligations to the order. No, just to you. He steps forward and then in that brief moment of closeness, leans down to plant a kiss on the top of my head. These public displays of affection have always been taboo. The only time Fritz is ever intimate with me is when we are alone. He grins at me, almost mischievously. Ah, uh, her royal dignified highness is blushing. I poke his shoulder. I am not. Fritz only laughs. It is good to see him being less formal. Sometimes when he teases me, I cannot help but remember the other side of him. The masked man with a sly mask. <laughs> the masked man with a sly smile. It is a side of him that he hides from most people, but not from me. Anyway, with this resignation, resignation I finally unleashed myself from the order. 
His gaze seems unfocused when he looks away, almost like he is remembering something. I'm never gonna let anyone ru else rule my life ever again. Fritz? His expression softens when he looks at me. It's nothing. I'm all yours now, princess. Well, almost, but first I have something I need to do. Care to tag along? I smile when he pull, holds out his arm. I don't mind the stares we get from the passing servants as I loop my arm to his and lean on his shoulder. By all means, lead on. The two of us make our way to the throne room together. As expected, the king is waiting for us. He has already cleared his schedule to make time for his personal audience with Fritz. If the two of you are both here, I am going to assume that the ceremony has come to a close. Fritz releases my arm in to duck in a into a ball. That is correct, your majesty. I am no longer with the Order of Caldera. All that remains is for me to return the required doc documents and decorations of my position. Father looks at Fritz thoughtfully, then he smiles. I would like to personally thank you for your dedication to this kingdom, Sir Fitzgerald. I apologize for leaving the re for heaving the responsibility of commander onto you when you are st still so young. Fritz's lips twitch. I look at him quizzically, not entirely certain if I was imagining the scowl on his face. No apologies are necessary, Your Majesty. It was, and has always been, an honor to serve Angeli. It was an honor to have a man as dedicated and committed as you leading the order. Now, Father stands, surprising us both. Though I am afraid you will not be granted us knighting you with a sword, I would insist that I reward you for all your hard work. From this day forward, I bestow you the, uh, the, upon you the title of Lord. I would also give you a stretch of land. You may do with it whatever you desire. Fritz shifts on his feet. His fidgeting is a sure sign he has something he wants to say. The king seems to notice. What say you, Sir Fitzgerald? I require no lands, your majesty. I still have my father's manor. But if I may be so bold, I would like to make a request. A request? Fritz and I share a glance. State your request, Sir Fitzgerald. Fritzel falls into to one knee and bows his head. Your Majesty, I humbly request that I will be allowed to publicly court your daughter, Princess Lucette. This news seems to take father aback. I stare at him confused. But he already knows that Fritz and I love each other. Why is this a surprise? Father lowers himself to the throne once again. His movements oddly stiff. Fritz is still bent on one knee, his head ducked in deference. The room is eerily silent. When no one rises to meet the challenge of quiet, I clear my throat and speak first. Father, I apologize. Even Fritz looks up at this. Your Majesty? I give you my blessing, Sir Fitzgerald. You are more than free to court my daughter. It is her decision whom she chooses after all. However, Father's expression falls. I know what he's gonna say before he even says it and it makes my heart sink. Public opinion is not is not so easily swayed. There is no doubt in my mind that your displays of affection will be criticized. Father tilts his head towards me. Do you understand my meaning, Lucette? I loathe as I am as as loath as I am to admit it, I do. There is a fragile balance in our kingdom right now. The magic that once existed is now completely gone. The witches The witches and even some fairies blame for me for its loss. Winning over the humans has already been difficult enough. 
Though most of the townsfolk and ants they are not courteous to me, many of them still do not trust me. And Fritz, many people still believe he is to blame for many of mother's atrocities. Despite the things he has done to make up for it, they still choose to blame him, even knowing he was cursed the entire time. There would be uh, there would be undoubtedly bad humors, uh, rumors of if the two of us publicly courted. I understand what you mean, but it does not affect my feelings. We are trying to rekindle the people's trust in us. I will make them trust me. Fritz rises and stares adamantly at the king. I have been dedicated to this kingdom ever since I became a knight, and I still am. That will never change, not even if... He falters, but only briefly. My point is that Princess Lucette and I have been trying to make things right since Hildur passed, and our own efforts is to find happiness should not be thwarted by the people we're trying to help. You have changed, Sir Fitzgerald. I remember your gentleness from when I first knighted you. Even now, you wear a smile on your face in trying times. You remain dedicated to our kingdom, even when it's broken and healing. You still smile, but now you smile with confidence. You have my blessing, Sir Fitzgerald, so long as you have my daughters. Remembering what I said to you, I have bestowed upon you the title of Lord. No one, not even the nobles, can look down on you. Hold your head proud. He turns to me. The same goes to you, Lucette. I appreciate your reminder. I should know that love knows no boundaries. He smiles fondly, and I can tell he is thinking of Ophelia. A small pain echoes somewhere inside my heart, but it feels misplaced and distant. The wounds of my of the past may still hurt, but they are healing. Our conversation with Father does not last much longer. After speaking briefly on some technical process, Fritz must now undergo to obtain to his new title, the king excuses us from the room. Outside in the hallway, Fritz seems equal parts relieved and deflated. I was expecting to come out feeling lighter, but father's concerns still will continue to weigh on me. Fritz forces a smile on his face. He is always good at making it seem as if he is fine, even when I know he must be hurting on the inside. Well, that went better than expected. Fritz. He grabs my hand and plants a kiss on my forehead. I think I'm going to attend to those obligations the king mentioned. I still need to return some documents and my armor, but after that, I will make sure I am available to you for the rest of the day. He squeezes my hand. Perhaps we could even spend the tonight together? I was thinking about a night out in town, but your thoughts seem to be on... Other things... What's the princess thinking about? Naughty, naughty girl. You naughty. What are you thinking about, huh? Naughty. He raises an expectant eyebrow. When I nut him on the shoulder, the cocky grin fades on his from his face and is replaced by a smile that oozes innocence. I'm beginning to wonder if maybe he wears that innocence like a shield. Anyway, I'll be back later. Let's meet up in your room in two hours' time. He starts to bow, but he suddenly stops, realizing he no longer needs to. Instead, he smiles at me one last time before turning and heading in the direction of the commander's office. He may try to hide it, but I can tell that he is also distressed by what the king said. Maybe I can buy him something in town. Something that will cheer him up. But what could I possibly purchase for him? Um, I think you should buy him tea. Like, tea can make you calm down, can't it? It has those effects, doesn't it? Mmm. But a croissant is delicious. Wait, what is his favorite foods? Does it tell? Wait, can I switch up what his favorite foods is? Fritz. 
favorite. <laughs> I'm looking at the wiki for, uh, for his favorite food, and I just see popular pages. But like, I'm gonna take a snapshot of this. <laughs> <laughs> like you have Karma, you have Waltz, you have Fritz, you have Lucy and Rod. They all have the pictures of their face, but Fritz has a picture of his knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I have no idea what their favorite food is. Mm, I think tea would be best. Yeah, so buy him tea. We have some tea in the palace, but the flavors Fritz prepares at home are not in our kitchens. Fritz often requests servants to bring tea to his room, but perhaps if I prepare a cup of tea of his favorite tea on my own, it would be more special. I nod my head, suddenly feeling resolute, and then head to the palace gates. Though I am not conf fami as familiar with the tea shops around Antilly, I am co confident in my choice of tea. I buy Fritz something simple and fragrant. It does not escape me that many of the people around me no notice the knight standing not too far away, watching me silently. Some people smile at me, but most divert their attention. Not out of fear, but out of some deep-rooted awkwardness. More often than not, I feel out of place in my own kingdom. The feeling has lessened over time, but no amount of interaction can make the discomfort or disappear completely. Once the tea has been packaged, I take the bag in my hands and walk away out of the bakery and hide nights in tow. I sigh with relief as I come out of the small space, relieved to be back in the town plaza where there are more spacious, where things are more spacious. A woman smiles as she passes me by. Good afternoon, your highness. She curtsies. Good afternoon. She has already walked off by the time I respond. Most of the townsfolk, while polite, are still quiet around me. They still prefer speaking with Emmeline and Rod. What can I do to make them trust me? What can I do to heal Antony? The two knights trail behind me as I begin to walk back to the, my carriage. I prefer having it parked in an inconspicuous area, so that I am forced to walk around and speak to the townsfolk. I hope it makes me seem more approachable. I am still lost in my thoughts when we come to an empty part of the plaza and someone abruptly steps into my path. I take a step back immediately. The knights behind me are at my side in a heartbeat. Uh, oh, I apologize. The same woman I just passed? Was she headed in this direction? There is no need to apologize. I'm afraid I wasn't watching where I was going. I am shocked when a mischievous smile appears at her lips. I am so fixated on her face that I barely registered the sound of shattering glass at my feet. A waft of mist suddenly rises from the ground, making it impossible for me to see anything. Princess! The knight's voice comes from behind me. I feel him grabbing at my arm. No, wait. This hand is ungloved! I try to pull away, but to no avail. A second, stronger hand grips on my other arm, pulling me away from the knights and through the mist. My eyes are cheery when the pain just pull me from away from the area. I struggle to clear my thoughts, and as we emerge into the alleyway, when I look up, I see the woman from earlier. A man stands beside her, behind, beside her, arms crossed. That was a little too easy. Honorable Knights of Caldera, hmm? Seems that we can still get the better of them, even without magic. These people are... They turn to look at me. Hello, Princess Lucette. What is the meaning of this? You really can't guess, Little Miss Princess? The man looks at me with surprising calmness. We're taking you hostage. What? Don't try anything funny. We don't want to hurt you, but if, but we will if we need to. I glare at the two of them. 
What is it that you do back there? A mist potion. One of the last left in Anjali. The two woman scowls at me. As you know, there is no more potion making. Not in a world where magic no longer exists. Some of the others ought, thought we ought to make you pay for taking away our magic. We're of the opinion that this would be cruel. You should be grateful for that. What do you plan on doing with me? You'll be staying with us for a while, little while until we decide on a ransom price. If you can't make gold selling our potions, we'll have to get it some other way. This is cowardly. I'm startled when the woman slaps my face. I step back, eyes wide. I thought we said... The woman silences the man with a glare. She turns back to me. What would a little girl like you know of our pain? Lady Hilder was gonna make this place for all of witches to thrive. Instead, because of her meddling, magic is gone forever. And not only that, but the humans who knew or know we are witches will ostracize us, making it impossible for us to get jobs. A spoiled princess like yourself, who has not even tried to bridge that divide, has no business in telling us what is cowardly. I have been too busy trying to mend this kingdom as a whole. I have been trying to gain the people's trust. I had thought that with magic gone, there would be no reason for anyone to hate witches. And yet, this discrimination still exists? The partners usher me forward. When I do not come willingly, the man grabs my arm and pulls me behind him. The two begin to transverse a series of complicated hallways that lead deeper and deeper into town. It almost feels like a labyrinth. The sky darkens in the crimson, then a deep purple as you move further into the alleyways. I was meant to meet Fritz. I was meant to meet meet Fritz hours ago. Thinking about Fritz makes me think of rescue, and of the knights that were separated from me. Do the knights even know about these alleys? I stop abruptly. I must do something. You don't have the luxury of stopping now, princess. Not unless you want to try our patience. The woman makes some dismissive gestures at the man as, and he nods his head before walking through the alley ahead of us. Where is he going? None of your business. The woman pulls a hidden dagger from her sleeves, sleeve and holds it to my neck. But I don't think this his absence gives you any sort of advantage. Oh, I really hate Princess Root. Why does it have to be like this? Why does everyone hate each other? No, Fritz, why? <laughs> oh, if we run, where would we go to? Where would you go to if you ran? Like the, these people will probably know this this these alleyways better than the princess does. Like she even said that she doesn't know where she is. So where to, where do we run to? Huh? You tell me now? Where? Go? Hmm? So definitely speak up. I like by process of elimination, you know, we can't run. So we have to speak up. Harming me would only anger the king. They want a ransom for us a ransom from. No, these people will not injure me. And running would be unwise when they know that this area better than me. You are aware how foolish this is, aren't you? I would reckon that it is hardly as foolish as our own mistakes, princess. I swallow back my retort and narrow my eyes. Even if you aren't able to demand a ransom from the king, the knights will stop at nothing to track you down. You are putting yourselves in danger. And... I meet the woman's gaze with confidence. It's no lie when I say I'm trying my best to do right the wrongs I'm committed in the past. I do not intend to let this discriminatory behavior continue. The woman scoffs. How honorable. 
You think you can barter with us, princess? You think you, the princess no one ever wanted, can save us from this situation? The woman presses the flat of the dagger further into my neck. I gasp before I can help it. I would remember who is in charge here. Oh, do tell. I wonder who it is that needs to be careful. The woman and I turn at the same time to face the source of the voice. Fitz, Fitz. Fitz! <laughs> Baby! Oh my gosh! Thank you for saving me! <laughs> Fritz walks towards us from the opposite end of the alley. Come any closer and I'll slit the princess's throat. She brings the dagger closer to my neck. But something silver flashes through the air and cuts the motion short. The dagger falls from her hand. Two laggers, daggers lay on the ground. One belonging to the woman and one must have been thrown by Fritz. Hey, what's happened here? The man who I presume had been scouting the area has returned. When he catches sight of Fritz, he moves to stand protectively by the woman's side. Both take a step back as Fritz approaches, eyes flashing dangerously. I wouldn't test me if I were you. I take a few steps back as well, putting myself as close to Fritz as possible. Fritz glances at me. Princess, are you unharmed? I am. He offers me a tight-lipped smile before turning his attention back to the kidnappers. Looks like it's useless trying to reason with people that have thick skulls. But at least you tried, princess. Thick skulls? It is you humans who have thick skulls. Us witches. She stops abruptly. The realization dawns upon her slowly. There are no witches. Not anymore. I've memorized your faces. No matter how far you run, I will track you down. Ah, uh, a, uh, a personal hunting dog, are we? Aye, those are big words for a knight who does nothing but take orders. Oh? I'm surprised when Fritz draws his blade. He has no need to wear a scabbard at his side now that he's given up his title, and yet here he is carrying a sword. In a heartbeat, he has a tip pointed at the man's neck. Allow me to enlighten you. If they are hurt, nothing will change. Fritz, let them go. Fritz! Fritz puts his fingers to his lips and releases a shrill whistle. The dark spaces in the alleyway, which I presume to be empty, suddenly fill with night. Did Fritz lead them here? Anyone who puts the princess in danger is to be captured on sight. Fritz pulls his back, back his sword, eyes narrowed. The knights need no further signal. Two of them rush towards to grab the man and the woman from behind. Fritz watches, his gaze cold. Eventually, once the kidnappers have been contained, he turns to me with a gentle, if not tired, smile. Are you sure you're okay, princess? I am fine, Fritz. Those two were... witches. Or they used to be. They wanted to capture me and demand a ransom from the king. They weren't very tactful, were they? I watch as the knights take the former witches away. Both glare at me as they are let down the alley alleyway. Before, they might have fought back with magic. Now, they have nothing. Princess? I feel Fritz's hand on my cheek. Come on, let's go back. We'll need to report this incident to Jurian. I turn to Fritz as the two of us are walking out, the, out of the alleyway. How did you find me? Practice. I'm a good tracker, princess. When you weren't in your room, I went looking for you. The knights reported that you left the palace earlier, so I went searching for you in town. Fritz frowns. I had no idea how worried I was when they told me you'd been captured. I ought to have reprimanded them for losing you so easily. If I was still their commander, I would have... Fritz stops himself and shakes his head. What were you doing out in town? 
I hold up a bag with a faint smile. I thought I would buy some tea for us to share later. Fitz's expression softens when he lays his eyes on the bag. You bought tea, princess? That's so thoughtful of you. He reaches for the bag, but I hide it behind my back before he can grab it. It was meant to be a surprise, and I still intend it for it to be. You'll have to wait for to see what flavor it is. Fritz laughs, and the joy seems to shake some of his stress from his shoulders. It is relieving to see him smile. I'll look forward to it then. Anyway, it looks like the day turned out to be far more eventful than any of us planned for. The smile fades from his face. I am sorry, princess. You don't need to apologize, Fritz. You still ended up saving me in the end. Had I been armed, I might have been able to protect myself. I might have not needed to be rescued. I sighed to myself. I doubt the knights would have would give me a sword when I have not been trained to use one. Is there nothing I can do to protect myself? After explaining the situation to both Druin and my father, I am finally allowed to return to my room. The first thing I do is collapse onto my bed with a sigh. I wanted to prepare some tea for Fritz tonight, but I am ex exhausted and it is late. Treating him is the last thing I want to do. I sit up long enough to stuff the tea back into one of my drawers before planting my head onto one of the shoulders. Onto one of the pillows! I'm sorry, Fritz. I've not been laying down for long when a knock sounds on the door. Lucette? Come in. I sit up as Fritz enters my room. He's smiling his usual smile, but he does not seem to be trying very hard to hide his tiredness from his eyes. I pat the space on the bed beside me. Are you okay, Fritz? Right as rain. He is most definitely not. He slides onto the bed beside me and slowly, almost hesitantly, settles an arm around my waist, pulling me closer. I am just relieved to know that we got you to you today before the situation got any worse, princess. Fritz? Hmm? You don't have to call me by the t my title anymore, you know. He had to be, he had to as a knight of Caldera, but he is no longer a knight. I'm relieving of your, you of your, of the responsibility. Fritz laughs sheepishly. Some habits die hard. There is a moment of silence between the two of us. I note the telltale tension in his body and stifle a sigh. I made him worry today. Had I been able to escape earlier, I might have not needed anyone assist anyone's assistance. It occurs to me that this is not the first time I have lamented my inability to fight back. As a princess, my life is technically always in danger. Knowing how to defend myself would be extremely helpful. I close my eyes and frown, unable to stop my thoughts from flooding with familiar faces. All of them now gone. Garland, Delora, Harfei... Truly, truly, this is the saddest route you would ever have. I still believe I would have been able to save them had I made wiser cho decisions and known how to fight back. I do not want anyone else to get hurt because of my own weakness. Prin... Lucette? Fitz pulls on a strand of loose hair away from my face. May I ask you for some advice, Fritz? Of course. Anything. I would like some means of protecting myself. Fritz furrows his eyebrows. Lucette, next time you go out, I'll make sure I'll to be with you. I'll... Fritz, I want to be able to protect myself. Fritz looks at me quietly. Then, much to my surprise, he smiles, if not a little grimly. I don't have much advice, but I do have this. 
He points out to his wrist. I turn to watch. In awe, he slides a dagger out of his teeth. He hands it to me. Isn't it forbidden for knights to carry, un carry concealed weapons? The townsfolk must always be able to see what the knights carry. The rule was implemented a few years ago, soon after the chaos befell Antilly. All those granted the rights to carry weapons must carry them out in the open. It is our way of building trust with the denizens of the kingdom. Much to my surprise, Fritz grins at me. I'm not a knight anymore, am I? The expression fades as he puts his finger up to the flat surface of the blade. I cannot help but stare at the elaborate design on the hilt. It's beautiful. Where did you get this? It belonged to my mother. A long, long time ago. Fritz has barely spoken of his mother. All I know about her is that she died when Fritz is very young. My father gave it to her as a gift. She wanted it the, for the same reasons you did. Suddenly, his expression is melancholy. He dips his head and frowns. Fritz, you don't need to speak about her if you do not wish to. No, it's not that. It's just... I just remembered the day my mother died. She didn't have this dagger with her. I've had it for a long time. But I never started keeping it on me until... His voice fades. The flicker of gloom in his eyes tell me he is remembering the events of two years ago. Though I have tried to block it out of my memories from that time, I cannot forget the dagger Fritz once pointed at his own throat. It was a dagger he, had, he kept hidden up his sleeve. The dagger Vark used to threaten us. Well, I've had it for a while, but now it's yours. Keep it in just in case, I can't be there. The last thing I want is for you to be in any kind of danger. I look down at the dagger, contemplating. I would like to learn how to use it. A weapon is only useful when you know how to wield it. Of course. I would be more than happy to teach you when I have some time on my hands. He inhales sharply. I stare in alarm as panic flits across his face. Fritz? It's nothing, princess. I still have to give my detailed report, but I promise I'll be free tomorrow morning. He walks towards the door, but then pauses to glare dance back at me. Lucette, I love you, and I'm glad I can say that without worrying about anything getting in the way. I love you too, Fritz, with all my heart. The two of us exchange smiles before he walks out the front door. Once I am alone, my eyes return to the beautiful dagger on my lap. It feels like Fritz has given me part of himself, but I cannot get this earlier distress out of my mind. The dagger is a comfort, but it also feels foreboding, like it might be the trigger to something ominous. I hide it away in one of my drawers before falling back onto my bed. It takes me a long time to fall asleep that night. Right as Rain, Chapter 2 My goodness, I hate this! I hate the story! Why is the story like this? I'm stressed! The other stories weren't this stressful! <laughs> oh my goodness Maybe the other stories were better since Fritz I mean Fritz was always called the traitor and all people were always wary of him in the other in the other uh routes but at least Everyone else was accepting, finally accepting of witches. This one, they're still discriminated against, and and now they're all all of the hate is going on to the princess, and I hate that. I know that sometimes it's that it is inevitable for some people to hate you, but I just can't 
take it when when a character I'm supposed to place uh, who is supposed to be the placeholder for me like the character is supposed to be me in the story but I hate it when I'm being hated and therefore I hate when the princess is being hated on it's, it, it will just be a hard story for me to read and as a whole I think I love Fritz, but his root is just something I would not, would rather not read. Even more than Chevalier's root. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, like if you like, dislike is a dislike. Subscribe for more content like this. If you like my content, then subscribe. I do a lot of visual novels, and I am thinking of branching out to other games such as uh, Spy Fox, <laughs> kids games. I love kids games to relive my kid childhood memories. And do comment down below what you think of this episode. What you think will be in the further in the. What's gonna happen in this route. And. I think that's all. Thank you for watching. And have a good day.